Look at this. Get out of town. I mean, you can stay where you are. Oh. Well, hello, good folk, and welcome back to the dining room of the 1925 Bungalow. I'm Scott. Today is a thrift haul. Now, everything that you see here today is new to the old curiosity shop. Some of it I'm keeping, and some of it will eventually be for sale, either in live sales or in the eBay store. But nothing that you see today is listed, all right? Um, I haven't even researched anything. I've cleaned all the sticky price tags and tape off. But everything else uh, will come in the future. Now you may say, oh, I saw something I like. How am I going to know where to find it? Don't you worry. Anytime I do listings for eBay, I always do a preview and let you know, hey, everybody, look what's new in the shop. So you can watch the video or you can subscribe to the eBay store, which is easy to do and free to do. And you'll get every time I list something, I think you get like a little newsletter or something. Um, it says, hey, look what's new in the shop. And you'll just get a little you can turn the notification on or off. And you'll see when things are listed, but I will show you in a video. Also, if it's going to be in a live sale, I do a live sale preview two or three days before the live sale to let you know that that's where it's going to be sold. So I sell either uh, in twice monthly live sales, the first and third Monday night of the month, or I sell in my eBay store, which is the old curiosity shop. And the link to the store is always in the description box right underneath of the video. So if you're new uh, here, that's kind of a review of how you'll find things. I go to thrift shops in the South Jersey, Philadelphia area. First of all, this came, ooh, you might've already seen this. This might've come a few weeks ago. And if I remember correctly, that is an anchor hocking handle. Now, again, I can, I've got all the books and I can go and look it up. But if memory serves, I think that's a hocking. Uh, and I should say hocking because this would have been made in the mid 30s before the company became anchor hocking. So, but I found this wonderful yellow. You can find depression glass in yellow. We normally find it in green and pink. But I bought that and then about two days later, I, I was in another state in another thrift shop. This time I was in Pennsylvania <sighs> and I found six matching tumblers. To, I'm only showing you two, but I've got six of them. The other four are over there. Wow, the same yellow depression glass, the same ribbed optic effect and also probably hawking. These probably date to the mid thirties before Hawking became anchor hawking. Wow, a whole set, a water set, lemonade set, iced tea set. Um, I probably am not gonna be really ready to sell this yet. I don't know, maybe I need to use it for one summer on the front porch, we'll see. Wasn't it fantastic? To find the picture Two or three days later, in a different chain of thrift store, in a different state, I find eight glasses to match it. Wonderful. For $1.50, I could not say no to one poor little uh, black glass Depression Era salt shaker. Just the one, but I had to have it. This I'll put away until next autumn. I've had this before. It's not marked. I think it might be a Fenton piece. I don't remember. It's cabbage it might be a cabbage rose so it's a nice amber uh, candy dish which you'll see again next October if I sell this you'll probably also see it uh, in the autumn season I haven't decided yet um, I love these wonderful uh, ceramic baking dishes with the original pierced uh, 
carrying, I always call this a carrying case, but that's not what you're supposed to call it. I did not know that, I hope I've got it, of course I don't have it turned the right way. I didn't know that Weller <laughs> made cookware. Now I'm assuming it's the same Weller Pottery Company that made the art pottery. So here's a wonderful casserole dish. And uh, you can see, you know, you can see Weller on the bottom. And it was down inside of this original, fits in there perfectly. So uh, this would easily date back to the 1930s. And uh, it's in great condition. Wouldn't that be nice to cook an autumn? It's just an autumn color, really. To cook in that and then bring it to the table. It's not too large either, so it would be perfect for a small fa small family. Uh, let's do these. I don't know if you saw these. Did you see these in a video? I can't remember. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plates. Did I already show you these? I don't know. I think it's a handsome design. I don't know why I have to hold all of them up. I guess I don't. Bear with me if I already showed these to you. I like the design. I knew they weren't American made when I saw them. And then when I turned them over, I see here on the back, I'm almost certain I already showed you these. It says, uh, Royal Dalton, England, US patent applied for. Very interesting with the lion on there and all the other hallmarks. It doesn't really show up very well. But I hadn't seen Royal Dalton made in England with US patents before. Um, they're all in excellent condition. And I, I liked these. I like these. <laughs> and so I think it would make a nice luncheon set for someone. Now, this... Uh, I pulled this out. This I'm going to be selling. I'm going to do, um, you know, I've got a bunch of items online right now that are sort of springtime items. I'm also working on uh, Eastery, Easter type items that you might want to use to decorate. And this will be in my little auction for Easter. Um, and it's also a depression era sort of um, ribbon candy edge and with an opalescence and it's a nice amethyst color. I don't know who the maker is of that. It's unmarked. And it's just a beautiful little candy dish thing. So that, that will be, no, I didn't ship it. That will be for sale. Always picking up uh, nice examples of EAPG. There's a nice footed, that could be a nut dish, candy dish, compote. That's a pretty one. Mm-hmm, unmarked, uh, nice luster, a uh, nice clarity to the glass, and uh, this is also a, an American-made piece of uh, EAPG, Early American Pattern Glass, pressed glass. People say, let me have some of this. It's some, I'm trying to get rid of that root beer that has lost its uh, fizz. Anytime I can find little tiny crackle glass pieces, I do buy them and I put them all together and hold on to them until I can actually do a big, well, not a big sale, but I'll group three or four or five or six of them together and sell them that way in a, in a lot. Look at this. Get out of town. I mean, you can stay where you are. Ooh, when was the last time you found the bottom the top and the ladle. Oh my word. It's depression glass. Yes, it has uranium in it and it'll glow. There's the lid in excellent condition with no chips or cracks. And so we'll take this and we've got the mayonnaise. Now this, with this little lid on it, typically the, the um, what would be, and I'll show you a, ma a mayonnaise. This is a, now there's no underplate to this or liner, but typically when people had a mayonnaise set, 
there would be no cover on it or what would be called a salad dressing set in the depression era. So you would see these sets like that on the table with no lid. And uh, normally the ladle would mat would be the same color, would match it. This, I like that, it, you know, watermelon goes together and I could do that. But um, so typical mayonnaise, this with the lid on it, um, you can certainly do whatever you want and serve whatever you want out of that, whether it's mustard or honey or jam or just uh, even candy and nuts and mints. It's just anything that you want to have covered up for the table. It's definitely not a hair hair receiver. Uh, but there's a, the one. I could not believe that I found all three pieces. Yeah? <laughs> That, that just hardly ever happens. Um, let's see. These, now these, meh, 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 meh. Okay, I bought them and they weren't, I didn't pay 99 cents for these. I think I paid almost $5 each for them. I'm not over the top about the griffin or English lion or whatever he is. Um, but I love the color of these, and if we turn them this way, I like them that way. They have the look of, you know, a stein, and uh, they are marked on the bottom, uh, made in occupied Japan. And of course, boy, that puts them 1945 to 1952. So that's the era of these. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I don't think this is something that I would actually drink out of, although I suppose you could. Um, I don't, they're glazed on the inside, and so I don't believe they were for decorative purposes only. Occupy Japan, not quite the collectible that it used to be. Um, I, you know, people just don't seem to be interested in this kind of thing. So, I, I haven't decided yet. I mean, they would be neat in the cream and green kitchen at, to put utensils in or maybe stick a little plant down in there. Um, yeah, they're in good condition. So they came home with me. This came home with me as well. And now I've got two of these. I've got one in pink and I've got one in green. And I think the one in green is downstairs is the Haz Hazel Atlas Crisscross, but neither one of them have their lids. So I'm probably going to sell both of them together, uh, even though the refrigerator lid... Now you can find these refrigerator lids, they're out there. This one just doesn't happen to have it. Um, not too, not, not, no roughness around the edges and it's in good condition. So depression era. And there's a lot of different things you can do with this, even without the lid. The green one that I have is down in the basement. I bought six little tiny cordials in amber. These are depression era and I will probably keep these and they'll probably, when I do the autumn uh, China Closet, they'll probably go in there to be used next year. I'm going to save my most exciting find until the end. Two more things to show you. This is just a quick thrift haul. Uh, a lot of the music that I play, one, of, two of the songs that I play frequently um, have a mid-century mid sound and uh, Let's see, Maria Elena and the other one is um, Fools Rush In. I play those two a lot and you guys love it. And a lot of you are confused about who that is. It's actually Sammy Kay and his orchestra, who was a big, hugely popular orchestra in the 40s. But he continued on and, and made into the, he was one of the uh, big bands that survived, Swing and Sway with Sammy Kay. And he continued on into the 19. 50s. I did buy this LP. It was very cheap at the thrift shop. Haven't played it yet. Uh, sometimes I can get away with the music if I don't get
copyright infringements. Uh, it just, they say if it's a hundred years old, but that ain't, that ain't true. I've played, I've, I've put several recordings on that are more than a hundred years old and you get copyright strikes on YouTube. So now you're going to laugh at me. This isn't the last thing, but it's next to the last. Um, because I think this might be the first time. Now, hold on. Okay. No, it's not a bowl. Yes, it is. Iris or Iris and Herringbone. Jeanette, we see it, what, in Marigold all the time. And I'm always pointing out that I find one or two or three of these bowls in every thrift store that I go into. But that's not what this is. When I was in college, my former college roommate and I became friends with a woman who, and she was much older. She was our parents' age, or close to our parents' age at that time. I think we met her in one of the antique malls. Anyway, the three of us hit it off. And uh, we would go thrifting and antiquing together. Uh, we were at least... Well, my college roommate and I were 19, 20 years old, and this woman was probably about 40. Anyway, we used to get the, the biggest kick because in her home, in her kitchen, she had an iris uh, ceiling fixture. And we always thought she took a bowl, drilled a hole in it, and made a ceiling shade out of it. No, 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 no. It was right as rain. They actually did make ceiling shades, which could be used anywhere in the house, the kitchen or whatnot. But we'll see here, this is drilled for a ceiling fixture. And this is not the this, this is not a bowl that somebody drilled a hole in. That's the real thing. And so this could be in your kitchen and your um your the glass that you have on your breakfast table, if you had the iris pattern could match your, your kitchen ceiling shade. So I don't know. I think I look, I did look this up. There might be one on eBay. Um, I don't suppose there are too, a great many number of them out there still. And I will probably just go ahead at some point and stick this online. But if you are a collector of Iris and Herringbone or Iris, and you want this for your kitchen ceiling fixture, let me know. I might just go ahead and sell it to you. Um, anyway, so I think it's just interesting. You know, Macbeth Evans made glass for light fixtures. So did Jeanette. Um, yeah, and there are some other, uh, there are a few other depression patterns and you can find light fixtures for them. Light, you, glass for light fixtures. Now, you saw all this two days ago, yesterday, whatever it was. I was, oh, it was the day I was running around Philly. I went into a thrift shop. And I grabbed this. And yes, I grabbed it. Uh, there's the decanter. And I've got, there were four. I don't want to hold all four of them up. I'll, I might. Four of the little shot glasses that go with it. This is rings, and Hawking had a pattern called banded rings where there are actually embossed, there are some embossed rings. You know what, hold on, I've got, wait a minute. I've gotta show you. Hold on, hold on, it's right out here in the kitchen, I promise you. Um, oh, I wish you, I wish you could smell the pot roast that I've got. I've got it, well actually it's a tenderloin. I've got it in my, um, it's cold and I've got a nice warm tenderloin in the crock pot with sweet potatoes in there and carrots and all kinds of, so this, I have two tumblers now and notice how um, it matches. But this doesn't have the banded rings. This doesn't have the inside, this doesn't have the embossed rings on it. You'll see that pattern by Hawking called rings. Now, this is early, but they weren't the only ones that had glass with painted rings. So uh, it's not always Anchor Hawking. 
But anyway, very early depression glass pattern of the 30s. And a lot of times this is in really bad shape, the rings, because they're, it's painted on there and they'll get torn up in the dishwasher. So I have two of these, which I already had, and now I've got this wonderful uh, uh, decanter with the uh, matching stopper. And I've got four of these. So I really would like to get cups and saucers and plates. I don't know what it is. I really like this as a pattern. And I sort of just always have. But that's it, I think, for now. So what was your, oh, it is not it. Hush your mouth, hush your mouth. Look at this. I can't believe. Okay. Oh, oh, where do you see these? Now, speaking of 1940s, I was in a thrift shop in New Jersey and I bought all of this. This was obviously in someone's collection. And this is an example where a person didn't collect a company. They didn't collect necessarily a pattern. They collected a design. And I'm going to call it the dumb art deco flower pots on a staircase. <laughs> it was a motif that, was, that you saw in the mid to late 40s. And it seems as though once it caught on, everybody was doing it. So we're gonna take a look at s several examples here. I've got one, two, three. Well, I'll just start showing them to you. And it's a classic design from the 40s. And it seems as though we always have some type of a staircase or terrace with stylized sort of somewhat deco uh, looking flower pots on there. Now this one is the most interesting because it says here, I've never heard of this and I haven't even looked it up yet. It says Betty, it's either Pepper or Pfeffer, P-E-P-P-E-R, Betty F Pepper dinnerware designed for Hudson's Detroit. Look at that. I know it's blurry. I'm going to try to hold it still. Now, I know some of you are, who love your research, you're going to jump on this. And I, please do, because I haven't had time. So is this Betty Pepper or Pepper? Someone who designed this and was Hudson's a department store in Detroit? Like in Philly, we had John Wanamaker and... I don't know, but that's the design on that one. We continue with that same type of design. This is a whole different one. All right, and once again, we, have, we always have this little staircase thing going on. And these are not in flower pots, but it's a platter. And this one is W.S. George Canary Tone. So that's a W.S. George pattern. We are familiar with that company. See that on the back. So notice similar, but not the same. Yeah, right? This is another, see, we're always talking about everybody copied each other, the glass companies, the pottery companies. And so we're going to have like five different companies here represented, and they're all copying that one deco staircase flower pot design. Let's do another one and take a look at that once again. Now here we have the trellis. Yeah, and that's staircase. And we've got little flower pots on it. Now this is a nice big platter. This one, unmarked. Yep. So, and here's another one. Now this one is slightly different. We still have that little staircase thing going on here, right? Which is the geometry, the geometric part of the deco. And we've got a basket with flowers in it. So a little derivation, but that's a nice one. And this one is a Homer Lachlan piece. And we're going to show it to you. Now, you'll see Homer Lachlan, and then you'll see Virginia Rose. Now, Virginia Rose is not the name of this decal. That's the blank. And it was enormously popular. So the Virginia Rose 
is the shape of the dish, the blank, yeah? And then this is a, I don't know what they called it, probably tulips in basket, who knows? So, Virginia Rose, and then we have A48N8. I know it's blurry. So the A, we've talked about this before. The A is the first letter of the alphabet. So that means the first month of the year, January. That's how Homer Laughlin, A, B, C, D, E. Remember, they skipped the letter I because it looks like a one. So the A is January. 48 is the year. N8 has to do with uh, like the factory, the factory building. It's just other weird stuff. Not that important. So this came off the assembly line in January of 1948. All right. And then yet another example by another company is I've got four wonderful little custard cups, ramkins, baking dishes, whatever they are. Four of them. Let's look at the pattern on the front. Cool. Again. We've got the little staircase going up to like a garden gate and the little flower pots on there. And the red. Notice everything is trimmed in red now, cream and green. This is the mid to late 40s. Cream and green, out of style. It would kind of be like having avocado green and harvest gold in your kitchen in the mid 80s. Yeah, really out of style. So everything here is sort of a, a canary creamy color with red, but that green, this green, see if it was 30 years earlier, the pottery would be trimmed in this color. Anyway, this one is Universal Cambridge of Ohio, oven proof. And we've seen that mark before. So, Neat, a decorative motif. And then of course, that little flower pot staircase thing is on the side of uh, porcelain teapots. It shows up in wallpaper of the era, shelf paper for kitchens, linens, tablecloths, hand towels in the kitchen. It is a big uh, kitchen motif mid to late 40s and all of that collection in one like all of these in in one thrift shop i kept it's like i kept walking around and every time i turned around i would find you know another piece i'm either going to keep all of it together and decorate my kitchen with it because my kitchen will be a combination of 1920s 30s 40s or I will sell this whole lot as one collection. I'd like to keep together. Somebody curated this, collected this, put it together. And I think somebody would love to have this in their 1940s kitchen, hang these platters on the wall, decorate with them, put them on a rack, that kind of thing. So I haven't made up my mind yet whether I'll be keeping those or selling them. But that's it. What did you like? Did you remember anything? Uh, are you a fan of this rings pattern? I like it a lot. And what did you think about these? What would you do with, oh, oh, and what about this? This is just like, can you imagine, with the ladle. Thrift shops. All right, that's it for today. I'm gonna be back with another thrift haul tomorrow. And in that thrift haul, it's gonna be a bunch of Art Deco and all of that will be listed in the eBay store, so you'll be able to go and shop there. Okay, let's chat in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Wait for the cat, and so long for now.